The name of this tutorial is Ira Krakow's Blender Game Engine 2.49 Tutorial Part 3. The purpose of this video is to show some basic sensor and actuator behavior in the Blender Game Engine. We'll look at the Always, Touch, and Keyboard sensors. I'll also show you some basic techniques for moving an object, how the movement interacts with gravity, how to bounce an object, and how to replace one object with another object. I use Blender 2.49b for this demo. So here's the setup. We'll use the default cube. Go to front view, numpad 1, the best for the Bender game engine because it shows the effect of gravity the best, as objects actually fall down in response to simulated gravity. Add a ground plane for the cube to bounce off of. Shift, add mesh, plane. Scale the plane eight times. S, eight, enter. Move the plane down about five blender units. It doesn't really matter. You could have moved the cube up as well to get the same effect. Select the cube. Go to the logic buttons, F4. Select rigid body from the physics types drop down. It turns on the actor button as well so that the cube becomes an actor with realistic rigid body physics applied in the game engine. The default sensor is the always sensor. Click the add button to add a sensor, controller, and an actuator to the cube. Wire up the logic bricks connecting the sensor to the controller and the controller to the actuator. Enter point one zero in the LOC X area. That's the first LOC area. What this logic block is saying that each time the logic blocks are evaluated, the always sensor is not strictly always, it's when the logic's evaluated. The cube will be moved 0.1 blender units in the X direction. Press P to start the game. Note how the cube moves in the X direction because of the logic brick, as well as down because of the rigid body physics, until it touches the plane, which is an obstacle that prevents the cube from falling any further. For a while, the cube moves in the X direction on the plane until eventually it falls off the plane. Press Escape to end the game. Let's make the cube bounce. Enter 0 in the loc X area to clear it. Now enter point 1 in the loc Z area, the third location in the uh, area for location. Press P to start the game. Now on every evaluation of the logic, the cube goes upward in the Z direction, point 0.1 blender unit. At the beginning, this causes the cube to go up a bit. Eventually, however, gravity takes over, being more powerful than the displacement in the Z direction, and the cube bounces down until it hits the plane. After that, the cube bounces up in the Z direction, then gravity takes over in an infinite cycle. Press Escape to stop the game. Perhaps you want the cube to start bouncing only when it touches the ground, allowing gravity to control the cube fully before it hits the ground. To do that, change the Always sensor to a Touch sensor. Press the P key with the cursor in the 3D window to start the game. Note that the bounce doesn't take place until the plane touches the ground. Press Escape to end the game. How to make the cube go in the X direction. Set the loc Z parameter, that's the third one, back to zero. And set the LINV, linear velocity, to 0.1. This makes the cube's speed in the X direction become 0.1 blender units every time it touches the plane. The cube indeed goes in the X direction that way, but its motion is unrealistic because the cube seems to penetrate into the plane. Perhaps you can do better. Hint, a more realistic way is to use the servo type of motion. Post your render at forum.iracrackout.com to show the cube moving more realistically without going into the plane. Press Escape to end the game. Now click the little Add button on the Lin V row at the right. What this does is add 10 blender units to the speed of the cube. It accelerates quickly along the x-axis until it falls from the plane. Press Escape to end the game. Here's an interesting effect. We can replace one mesh with another while the game engine runs. We'll use the keyboard sensor to trigger this effect. We'll replace the cube with Suzanne. Here's how it's done. Go to level 2 by clicking on the second rectangle. Add Suzanne. Space, add mesh, monkey. Click back on level 1. The game engine only shows the objects on level 1. So we'll substitute the cube with Suzanne when we hit the R key for replace, I guess. First, change the sensor to a keyboard sensor by selecting keyboard from the sensor type drop down. 
left click in the key area. In the rectangle where it says press a key, move the cursor, then press the R key. Now the key area displays the letter R. Whatever happens will be triggered when the user presses the R key. In the actuator area, select Edit Object. Below that pop-up is a pop-up menu which lets you select the type of object editing you want. Select Replace Mesh. In the OBJ field, enter Suzanne. Wire the sensor to the controller and the controller to the actuator. Run the game by moving the cursor into the 3D window and pressing the P key. Press the R key and Suzanne magically replaces the cube. This is a great technique, say, if you want your Cinderella mesh to be replaced by a pumpkin mesh, as in the story. Press Escape to end the game. Now suppose you want the cube back. We can show and hide the details about the sensor and actuator by clicking on the little yellow arrow at the right, which changes to a white arrow. This is useful when you want to show a lot of logic bricks in a small area. So click these arrows to hide the details about the sensor and the actuator. And let's make the C key restore the cube back. To do that, we need another set of logic bricks. Click the Add buttons on the Sensor, Controller, and Actuator tabs. Set the sensor type to Keyboard. Left click in the key area. In the rectangle where it says Press a key, press the C key. Now the key area displays the letter C. In the Actuator area, select Edit Object. In the pop-up menu, which lets you select the type of object editing you want, select Replace Mesh. In the OBJ field, enter Cube. Wire the sensor to the controller and the controller to the actuator. Run the game by moving the cursor into the 3D window and pressing the P key. Let the cube fall into the ground. Press the R key f first, replacing the cube with the monkey. Press the C key next, replacing the monkey with the cube. Pretty neat. You can make objects appear and disappear. One last thing I want to point out before my 10 minutes runs out. Don't worry, I'll show more stuff in the next part. It's a good idea to name your sensor something meaningful instead of sensor and sensor one, the default names. To do that, expand the details for each sensor. Name the first sensor monkey, it's in the name area, and click the arrow to hide the details. Expand the details for the second sensor. Name the second sensor cube, now you can tell what each sensor does. I hope this gives you a better idea of how to wire up logic bricks to do basic object movement, as well as how to replace one object with another under Game Engine Control. Leave your comments at forum.iracrackow.com. And don't forget to press the subscribe button on YouTube to subscribe to my videos. Happy blendering!